December in 2023, I received this amazing Michael Brecker practice book, which is out now. I received it from Share Music, and they encouraged me to do a full review on the book. But reading through the book, listening to the music of Michael Brecker, I was inspired to do so much more. There's so much information in this book, and this book needs so much more attention. Michael Brecker just keeps inspiring me. So I'll dig right into this. The most important skill is timing. We all know that timing is the most important skill, and we need to train this every day. Day. So did Michael Brecker. I have indeed scanned through the book and found more pages where it mentions timing, fingers, articulation, that kind of thing. And in the book this exercise is written down. And specifically says fingers. When you're training an exercise like this, make sure your fingers are moving very tightly back and forth, like small drumsticks. And when you work on this material, make sure you move any distraction. And of course, I mean your telephone, that kind of stuff. But there are so many distractions when we play the saxophone. To remove tonguing, just play with your sound and fingers. And what Michael Brecker says right here, use your fingers only, no tonguing. There's not a little bit saying press hard and this means you have to move your fingers in the timing. Press hard and feel the timing of the instrument. When you press hard you get a much more tight timing. Of course you shouldn't press that hard that you get pain and stuff but press hard that you feel the timing. When I see exercises in a book I want to give them my own turn and in this I want to add them into a musical content. <laughs> Playing the scale up and down from the root to the fifth and back only as a technical exercise is not sufficient. For example, if you start this exercise from the root to the fifth on the minor chord, you get the starts of a 2-5-1. This means you can add this into all these progressions that has 2-5-1s or minor chords. Now the scale run has a direct application in the music we are playing. And you get both the technique out of it and new vocabulary. So let's take this tip from Michael Brecker work out with metronome. And every time I use the metronome, I take no chances. I put it slow so I can figure out what's going on so I can move my fingers in the beat to the rhythm because our amazing brains learns everything, also your mistakes. Try playing this exercise four times. Take away all unnecessary focus, no tonguing, because we can always add this later. We can work on that in another video. Now it's only about focusing on the timing and getting this timing as tight into your fingers as possible. Start turning up the speed of the metronome and repeat until you reach your max. Keep going faster and faster, but stay in control. Again, do not allow yourself to make mistakes because your big brain learns everything. And when you reach your levels where you start making mistakes, stop and take it down a notch. Play those top levels where you're not making mistakes. Wait a day and play it again and you'll see a miracle. You will be able to play this tomorrow. Another challenge I think you should do when you're working with the metronome is putting that on different beats. Here on the 2-4. You can also put it just on the 1. On the 3. On the 4. In this way there are tons of ways to challenge yourself just with one lick and get much better timing. I really want to emphasize this, take it slow, your brain learns everything, also the mistakes. When you look closer into the book you can get even more out of this exercise. I know that Brecker loved playing in all 12 keys. All over the book it says play in all 12 keys. But when you move the line up a half step. <laughs> D flat your speed might not be the same. So please do not compare the old key with the new key because you will be slower because you have to learn it. So take it all from the start. Start slowly with the metronome and build up. Do everything in the new key which you did in the old key. Moving the beat around with the metronome and start speeding up until you reach your maximum. So Michael Brecker would play everything in all 12 keys. I promise you, if you start digging into all 12 keys, you will get so extremely flexible and you will get so much overview of all the material. How do you do this? I see two options. So every time you have a practice session, you take one, two or three keys and play the exercise round. You speed it up, you play with the metronome. Think about the exercise, do it in two or three keys. After a couple of weeks you will have been playing through all the 12 keys and you are there. But then if you do not use all this technique you have built up, it is of no use you are having a great technique if you are not using it. <laughs> 
remember to add the technical lines into musical lines. Here I'm adding it into this 251, but moving the 251 up in different keys. And this way you get your technique directly into your music and you get everything around in 12 keys. In the lesson manual on Patreon, I have of course put all exercises into 12 keys. Lots of small exercises moved into small blown licks that you can see all the connections. Get it on Patreon, the link is in the description. From technique to lick, any small lick is a technical exercise. <laughs> When we're looking at the 251 line we built, the G7 is also a technical exercise. And you can easily take this one and move around the 12 keys. I'm not saying you should do it all in one exercise. Take one leg, put it into an exercise and do it over one or two practice sessions. And now apply the lick into tunes you are playing. Here I've chosen a blues, so the first four bars of the blues can look like this. I'm adding this small dominant lick into the first four bars of dominance in the blues. The first three bars are pretty obvious. This is basically just copy paste when you have the lick in all 12 keys. I want to spice this up, so in the fourth bar there's a dominant two of course. I'm adding the 2 in front of the 5, so I get a 2-5, but I'm only playing that minor lick instead of that 5. So you can both add the minor line and the dominant line because they're interchangeable, so you can use these as substitutes. And when I fill in the whole blues, it sounds like this. <laughs> Now there's only one thing to do, start making music with your technical exercises. I know you'll do this and I know that Michael Brecker also mentions music in his practice book, so we'll dig into that later. Check out these ways Michael Brecker is practicing in the lesson manual on Patreon. Everything is in all 12 keys, the link is in the description. If you want to dig deeper into how the greats might have practiced, here's a video for you featuring Michael Brecker, Charlie Parker and John Coltrane. Play music, have fun.